Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, we continue with uh, the topic of uh, zakatability on wealth. There are two types of wealth. The two categories of wealth. One is zakatable wealth, wealth which needs to pay zakat, and uh, non-zakatable wealth. According to classical juries, assets such as livestock and business assets are subject to zakat and zakatable at the rate of 2.5%. So livestock like animals uh, such as um, goats, sheep, cows, uh, they are called zakatable wealth. And uh, if uh, it fulfills the result and other conditions, the zakat uh, rate is 2.5% on the principal and uh, its increment. However, fixed assets such as land and non fixed assets such as Paddy are uh, zakatable and uh, are obliged only on growth or annama once the produce is harvested. Okay, so zakat on paddy is, is called annama because it is paid only when it is harvested. So if the paddy is not harvested, or you know uh, uh, the paddy cannot be harvested for some reason then uh, there is no need to pay the cut only when the produce is harvested then uh, there is an obligation to pay the cut According to the classical jurist, the condition for the accountability is annama or growth. Meaning, in order for any zakat to be zakatable, it must either grow or have potential to grow. Zakatable assets that are mentioned in the Quran include agricultural produce. Semua barang uh, pertanian. Kalau di negara Arab tu uh, kurma uh, apa lagi ya? uh, anggur. Kalau di Malaysia ni uh, padi lah. Di tengah negara uh, gandum, bali atau uh, agricultural produce. Kemudian, kalau di Malaysia ni, uh, durian, mempelam, kaya apa? Uh, durian, mempelam, rambutan, kena zakat tak? Kena tak zakat as agricultural produce? Hmm. Kena kot. Tak kena. Tak kena. Di Malaysia ni, Zakat pertanian hanya ke atas padi saja. Oh. Okay. Mempelam rambutan apa semua tu tak perlu bayar zakat pertanian. Hmm. Uh, kalau ada ladang rambutan, ladang durian banyak mana pun tak kena bayar zakat. Hmm. Padi saja. Padi saja. Hmm. Kemudian uh, ada ulama daripada Mesir bekas uh, Syekh Syekhul Azhar saya lupa nama dia dia datang ke Kedah dia kata saya nak mencadangkan supaya uh, hasil pertanian di Malaysia ni termasuk durian mempelam rambutan dan sebagainya dikenakan zakat pertanian 
Sebab dia kata di negara Arab banyak hasil pertanian yang dikenakan zakat. Kurma, bali, gandum dan lain-lain lah. Saya pun lupa dia sebut kan. Ada banyak hasil pertanian di negara Arab yang dikenakan zakat. Tapi di Malaysia ni padi saja. Kenapa dia tanya? Jadi dia dia menggalakkan pengkaji-pengkaji ulama-ulama di Malaysia ni mengeluarkan fatwa. Apakah hasil pertanian yang wajib dikeluarkan zakat di Malaysia? Zakat ni belum ada kajian tu lah. Jadi saya duduk cara nak nak tulis buku lah, insya Allah. Uh, nota ni pun sebahagian pada buku. Oh. Saya nak uh, kaji tengok dan nak berkucah bahawa perlu dimasukkan hasil pertanian lain selain pada padi. Uh, rambutan, durian, hmm. hasil pertanian lain pun perlu dibayar zakat okay. pertanian. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Kalau macam padi tu dikena zakat sebab memang orang Malaysia makan beras ke macam tu ke? Ya, ya. Oh, ha, ya. Sebab hmm. di, didefinisikan, itu pendapat uh, ulama Mesir tu lah kan. Hmm. Tapi saya duk baca, hujah kenapa padi saja dikenakan uh, zakat kerana Zakat pertanian dikenalkan ke atas makanan ruji. Makanan hmm. ruji. Staple food. Staple food is defined as food which is in the indispensable for survival. Makanan ruji didefinisikan sebagai makanan yang mesti atau makanan yang tidak dapat tidak mesti dimakan untuk hidup macam di Malaysia ni beras lah uh, nasi lah nasi. kalau tak makan durian tak apa <laughs> tak makan berpelan pun tak apa <laughs> tak makan nasi <laughs> tak boleh lah sebab itulah hanya padi yang dikenalkan <laughs> Nah, tu hujah takat ni lah. Hmm. Di, di negara Arab, mereka boleh hidup kalau makan kurma saja, mereka boleh hidup kan. Jadi kurma hmm. kena takat. Takat. Hmm. Hmm. Gandum, Gandum, bali, uh, anggur, uh, dates, dates ni apa? Uh, dates ni kurma. Oh, okay. Ada banyak barang yang kenakan zakat di negara Arab lah. Jadi bila ulama tu datang ke Malaysia, dia rasa, her- dia rasa heran lah. Satu barangan je. Satu hasil pertanyaan yang dikenakan zakat. Zakat kali. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. okay, zakatable assets which are mentioned in the Quran include agricultural produce, hasil tanaman, gold and silver, and wealth extracted from earth. Termasuk emas, belian, uh, patutnya termasuk juga apa tu, petroleum, eh? petroleum, apa-apa kekayaan yang, yang digali daripada sumber bumi. Wealth extracted from earth. Prof, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam details the terms and conditions of zakatable wealth, such as gold and silver. Agricultural produce, wealth extracted from earth, ma'adin, and ancient treasure, arikas and uh, livestock. These are the wealth mentioned in the hadith. Gold and silver, agricultural produce, wealth extracted from earth, 
Ma'adin and ancient treasure are recast and lacks stock. So based on the Quran and Sunnah, some scholars opine that zakatable wealth include livestock, such as camels, cows, and sheep. Money, gold or silver, used as business assets and savings, crops used as paper food. Uh, bahan apa ni? Pertanian, hasil, hasil pertanian yang digunakan sebagai makanan uh, rugi, staple food. Makanan yang kita perlu untuk hidup. Such as rice, wheat, barley, dates and raisins. And treasures hidden underground by ancients. Uh, harta karun eh? Treasures hidden underground by ancients and mining under or on the surface of the earth. Bija timah, emas, uh, besi, hasil petroleum. Itu termasuk barang yang dikenakan zakat. Zakatable item. However, there were other group of scholars who opined that zakatable wealth are not restricted to those explicitly mentioned by the Quran and Sunnah. Jadi, ulama terkini berpendapat bahawa selain pada yang disebut dalam Quran dan Sunnah, ada lagi aset yang perlu dikenakan zakat. Tak sebut dalam Quran. Tak sebut dalam Sunnah. Hmm. Tapi aset ni perlu dikenakan zakat. Termasuk. So these scholars arrived at a conclusion that earned zakat. Earned income. Zakatul mal al-mustafat. Mana-mana pendapatan yang diusahakan. Okay. Income from non-zakatable asset, al-mal al-mustawalat, and investment assets are zakatable. So kalau ditanya apakah item yang tidak ada dalam Quran dan tidak ada dalam Sunnah, tapi ulama terkini mengatakan perlu zakat, perlu dibayar zakat. Tiga benda. Pertama, zakatul mal al-mustafad. Yang kedua, al-mal al-mustawalat. Dan ketiga, investment asset. Ini tak sebut dalam Quran. Okey, apakah yang dimaksud dengan zakatul mal al-mustafad? Apakah al-mal al-mustafad? Secara umumnya, al-mal al-mustafad ialah apa-apa harta yang diperolehi hasil daripada usaha. Bahasa Inggerisnya earned income. Pendapatan yang diperolehi hasil daripada usaha. Earned income. According to Dr. Yusuf Al-Qadawi dalam buku Fiqh Zakat, Zakat on income or Mustafa is termed as zakatul mal. Mustafa means income zakat derived from salaries. Okay, tak sebutlah Quran. Tak sebutlah hadis. Tapi mal al-mustafa income zakat derived from salaries. Kena bayar zakat. Jadi kita kerja dengan orang lain, okay. dibayar gaji, kena zakat. Eh, apakah yang dimaksudkan dengan uh, salary ataupun employment income? Employment income, it is a reward to employees given by employers or individuals or institutions. The income includes salaries, unpaid wages, 
various allowances, vehicle, meals, meetings, zakat, income and others, including bonus or something that can be calculated as revenue, such as royalties and rent. Jadi royalty pun kena bayar zakat, sewa pun kena bayar zakat. Hmm. Kalau dia ada rumah sewa, okay, kemudian dia dapat uh, sewa yang dibayar oleh penyewa kan. Hmm. Itu juga perlu dimasukkan dalam uh, sebagai mal al-mustafat. Jadi kena jumlahkan. Campur, jumlahkan salaries, unpaid, unpaid wages, various allowances, semua allowance yang dia dapat, income and others including bonus, kalau dapat bonus pun kena zakat, uh, termasuk royalty, kalau dia tulis buku dia dapat royalty, kalau dia ada rumah sewa dia dapat rent, kena masuk jumlahkan sebagai mal, Al Mustafat. Zakat is obligatory on the income produced, as has been stated by many scholars, including Al Qaldawi, as well as by the National Fatwa Committee, Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan. The obligation to pay income zakat is based on the following conditions. Syarat-syarat untuk membayar zakat. Islam, independent, merdeka. Perfect ownership, mil kutam. Nisab, cukup uh, nisab. Haul and halal income. Zakat rate on income is 2.5% of income. Ada orang tanya, kalau dia bekerja dan dapat pendapatan yang haram, dia kena bayar zakat tak? Pendapatan haram. Pendapatan haram tak payah bayar zakat. Ya. 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 Kalau pendapatan tu haram, dia bayar zakat, mas pendapatan tu tetap haram. Haram, hmm. sebab haram, gaji dia haram. Hmm. Kalau gaji dia haram, misalnya dia bekerja uh, dalam perniagaan yang haram. Yeah. Jadi income dia tak payah bayar zakat. Dan hmm. pendapatan dia adalah haram. Kalau bayar zakat pun dia tetap. Pendapatan tak dia haram. tetap haram. Pendapatan yang haram tidak boleh disucikan dengan zakat. Conditions of zakatability. Syarat-syarat membayar zakat. Conditions of zakatability are as follows. Islam. Zakat obligation on zakatable assets is obligatory on every free Muslim, male or female, sin or insane, minor or adult. In the case of insanity or minor guardian or any party given the rights under the law to protect them must pay zakat on their behalf. It's worth mentioning that if the wealth is shared with non-Muslims, only the Muslim portion is zakatable. Kalau dia share business, eh? katalah 50-50. So zakat, perniagaan, hanya dikenakan ke atas 50% yang dimiliki oleh orang Islam. Contohlah, contohlah kalau 50-50. Kalau misalnya syarikat tu 30% Muslim, 70% non-Muslim, bayar hanya ke atas portion yang Muslim sahaja. Hmm. Ya. So, if the wealth is shared with non-Muslims, only the Muslim portion is zakatable. 
Betala, zaman sekarang ni buat bisnes share dengan orang bukan Islam kan? So, bahagian yang dimiliki oleh orang Islam sahaja yang perlu dibayar zakat. Okay, the second condition is inde independent, merdeka. A Muslim must be independent as opposed to being a slave to be obliged to pay zakat. Because a slave does not own any wealth as the slave is owned by his master. In modern context, slavery system no longer exists. Sekarang ni tak ada lah sistem perhambaan, tak ada lah. Tak ada. So, however, it is still worth mentioning because it could have some implications on zakat. Sekarang ni tak ada sistem ni lah. Tapi, sebut juga lah kan. Sebab zaman dulu ada yang Uh, menjadi hamba. Hamba tidak wajib membayar zakat. Hanya orang yang merdeka saja. The third condition is milkutam or complete ownership. Complete ownership means possessing the wealth and benefits of the wealth without any legal restriction from other parties or authorities. If the wealth is owned by an individual, the individual must have complete possession without sharing with others. However, if the wealth is shared under company or other entities, it is considered by owned by one owner. It means that if the shared wealth is above the sub, it is zakatable even though each individual's wealth does not reach the nisab. It must be noted that a wealth is not in complete ownership if there are rules or laws which prohibit which prohibit the possession of the wealth or the use of its benefits, such as monies in employee provident fund accounts owned by Muslims under the age of 55. Jadi, um, wang caruman dalam KWSP oleh seseorang yang belum berumur 55 tidak dikenakan zakat hanya dikenakan zakat selepas umur 55 sebab sebelum umur 55 wang dalam akaun KWSP tidak dimiliki sepenuhnya not in complete ownership ada duit tapi tak boleh buat keluar. Hmm. Hmm. So, monies in employee provident fund accounts owned by Muslims under the age of 55 is not in complete ownership. Therefore, it's not in, it's not zakatable. Tapi bila umur 55 dah boleh buat keluar, maka pada ketika itu, Uh, dia apa ni, simpanan KWSP itu adalah dalam pemilikan sempurna selepas umur 55 dan wajib dikeluarkan zakat 2.5% darat dengan uh, wang simpanan. Monies in retirement fund or co-op and armed forces fund board. Okay. Wang yang dalam kuat dan dalam LTAT itu tidak dianggap sebagai uh, sebagai milk utam, sebagai complete ownership. Selagi uh, selagi dia belum apa ni? Selagi dia belum boleh mengeluarkan. Saya tak pasti umur berapa. Eh? Dia boleh keluarkan. Dalam kuat ni, saya rasa umur 55 juga. Eh. Kalau LT80 ni, oh, macam ha, dia macam EPS juga rasanya. Kalau LT80 ni pun sama juga lah. So, selagi hmm. dia tak boleh mengeluarkan, dia tak payah bayar zakat. Once dia boleh mengeluarkan, 
pada ketika itu dia wajib bayar zakat pada kadar 25%. Okay, conditions number four, syarat membayar zakat. Another condition of zakatability is the ownership of wealth must be at least for a period at all, or how of one lunar year, tahun hijriah, which means that if the wealth is owned for a period or how of less than one lunar year, it is not zakatable. Kalau tak cukup haul, tak payah bayar zakat. However, there are exceptions. Ada pengecualian. Except for certain wealth, such as agricultural produce. Hasil pertanian tak payah tunggu haul. Mining or ma'adin extracted from the earth emas ke timah ke biji timah ke apa-apa yang dikeluarkan daripada bumi di kedah ni katanya nak buat kajian apa ni ada ada ma'adin ada logam dalam tanah ha So, kalau berjaya, maksudnya perlu dibayar zakat tanpa perlu tunggu haul. Tak payah tunggu haul. Keluar dia, terus bayar zakat. Termasuk zakat hmm. uh, termasuk zakat uh, petroleum. Okay. Dan zakat yang saya kaji uh, Zakat Ma'adin ni tidak dibayar. Uh, yang dibayar ialah zakat perniagaan petroleum. Dia dibayar sebagai zakat perniagaan. Tapi tak dibayar sebagai zakat Ma'adin. Okay. Begitu juga... Uh, employment income and professional earnings are zakatable without having to fulfill the condition of haul. Okay, like I said before, employment income okay, is paid at the time of receiving the income. No need to wait for haul. Okay. So, So this is this must be very clear. I talked to one professor at one time. I asked one professor, and uh, this professor used to teach uh, the subject of zakat. So I asked. I asked him. Prof, did you pay zakat? And he asked me, why do you ask that question? He was not happy with my question. So I said, I said Prof, I just asked the question. Did you pay zakat or not? He said, no. I do not pay income zakat. And I asked him, he was a lecturer of zakat. <laughs> Prof, why? <laughs> why, why, you, why you didn't pay zakat? And then he said, this is what's wrong with you. <laughs> he said, this is what's wrong with you. <laughs> And I said, okay. Continue, Prof. He said, there are some uh, young zakat researchers. At that time, I was still young. <laughs> <laughs> there are some young researchers who do not understand the concept of surplus wealth, he said. 
surplus zakat is paid on the surplus wealth. Okay. Although I'm a professor, I never have surplus wealth because at the end of the year, at the end of the month, I use all my money. I use all my salary. I don't have any surplus wealth. And I said, Prof, okay, the zakat on income, okay, do not require zakat on income does not require how we pay zakat at the time that we receive the income. Okay. So I said, even if someone owns, for example, $1 million, $1 million ringgit a month, if it waits for how, then it will not reach me up. Kalau gaji satu um, gaji satu juta, satu juta kalau gaji satu uh, juta pun dia akan habis juga. Saya kata, uh, okay, saya sebut according to Dr Yusuf Al Bawi, okay, the um, the zakat on income does not have to wait for the howl. Howl is not the condition for paying employment income zakat. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was my uh, discussion with professor. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was still young. Uh, oh. uh, and then uh, at that time, I was interested in studying a couple of topics, a couple of issues regarding zakat. So I interviewed him. Mm. Uh, to me, it was surprising, considering he was a lecturer of zakat. Zakat, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, it was surprising. Mm. So this, so I always mention this story to my students because we have to understand. We have to understand that <coughs> employment income. Okay, needs to be paid zakat, and the um, how is not the condition to pay income on employment to pay zakat on employment income. But simple as that. Zakat gaji that tidak perlu tunggu how. Itu saja. Cukup nisa. Maksudnya kalau gaji dia lebih daripada 1300 setahun, oh sorry, 1300 sebulan, sebulan dapat gaji saja terus bayar. Bayar, bayar zakat. Hmm. Sebab profesor yang gaji 15000 pun tak mau bayar zakat. <laughs> dia 1300 dah wajib bayar zakat. Eh? Hmm. Hmm. Jadi siapa-siapa yang bekerja tu tengok gaji dia. 1300 uh, bolehlah buat pengiraan zakat. Hmm. Okay, saya pun boleh tolong tapi kalau nak nak si kan ada zakat kalkulator. Saya so, boleh buat online je nak kira zakat ni. Okay, the fifth condition is nisab. Nisab is the minimum zakatable value. Nisab is the minimum zakatable value of asset. Any asset which fulfills the condition of nisab, which is equivalent to 20 dinars of gold. 20 dinars of gold is equivalent to 85 grams of gold. Zaman dulu dia guna dinar, 20 dinar emas. Zaman dulu. Sekarang kita guna gram. 85 gram emas or 200 dirham grams of silver 200 dirham of silver zaman dulu 200 dirham perak sekarang ni 595 gram perak 
is zakatable mesti dibayar zakat kalau melebihi 85 gram emas Hmm. According to Dr Yusuf Al Khaldawi, if the condition of nisab is fulfilled at the end of the year, then the wealth is zakatable because it does not require the wealth nisab to be owned for the duration of a year. Yeah. Maksudnya di penghujung tahun tu, kalau uh, nilai kekayaan melebihi nisab okey kena bayar zakat tak perlu kira setahun tu cukup tak nisab tak perlu it does not require the wealth nisab to be owned for the duration of a year okey the wealth is zakatable If at the end of the year the amount is greater than the nisab, tengok ujung tahun saja. Kalau lebih pada nisab, kena bayar zakat. Okay, kita tengok contoh nisab. Seperti mana yang disebut dalam hadis. Okey. Ini adalah item yang ada dalam hadis. Camel, cow, goat, gold, silver crop. Camel, ni sub five camel. Okey. Ada lima ekor unta kena bayar uh, kena bayar zakat. Ni sub for cow is 30 cows. Goat 40 goat, gold 20 dinar or misal or 85 grams of gold, silver 200 dirham of silver or 595 um, grams of silver, trot 400 gantang. Kalau padi itu 400 gantang padi. Berapa hmm. banyak tak tahu ni? Empat ratus. Empat ratus gantang. Cukup empat ratus hmm. gantang? Kena bayar. Banyak. Banyak zakat padi. Gantang kita pun tak nak tengok gantang. Empat ratus gantang sama dengan berapa kilo? Banyak. Saya pun tak berapa tahu nak kena cek. Hmm. Saya. Saya. Lah ni tak pakai gantang lah. Lah ni dia pakai kilo. Okay. Ya, kilo. Dia pakai tan je tu. Hmm. Berapa tan. So, for any zakatable wealth, nisab is determined by an analogy to the nisab as stated in table 2.1. Jadi, dalam table tu tak disebut nisab, nisab gaji misalnya. Jadi nisab gaji dia ikut nisab emas iaitu 85 gram emas. It is worth mentioning that all varieties of the same type of wealth must be combined together in order to determine the nisab. For example, cash in savings and current account and other deposits must be combined to be compared to the nisab of gold which is 85 grams of gold in addition according to dr yusuf al qadawi for zakatable wealth which does not require the condition of how such as extracted mining ma'adin and agricultural produce extraction or harvest can be combined within one harvesting season or a year this implies that any income of ma'adin and agricultural produce as well as employment income and professional earnings received throughout the year must be combined in order to the to determine nisab
Okey, ada soalan dekat ni? Hmm. Tak ada. Maksud dia gini, kalau dia buat bendang kan. Hmm. Lepas tu katalah tak cukup nisab. Dia pun kata oh tak cukup nisab, tak ada bayar. Tunggu dulu. Dia kena combine dalam satu tahun. Buat bendang satu tahun dua kali. Okey. Katalah kali pertama tak cukup nisab. Dia kena tambah. Campur dengan hasil tanaman musim kedua dalam tahun yang sama. Itu oh, oh, maksud dia. Hmm. Hmm. Itu Kalau ada yang macam kena tak sampai cukup hal tu, tu kalau yang dia punya padi tu dah banyak lah, bo boleh lah. Oh, kalau dia dah cukup nesot, dia bayar je lah. Hmm, okay. uh, ni cerita kalau tak cukup nesot. Kalau tak cukup. Kan? Ah, okay, okay. Hmm. Ada orang tanya. Okay. 85. Okay. 85 gram emas. Nilainya ialah. 85 gram emas Katalah 1 gram emas 200 ringgit Contohlah oh, yeah. So kat, kali 85 So 17 ribu 17 ribu ialah nisot emas Dia kata gaji saya bukan 17 ribu Gaji saya 2 ribu je Macam mana saya nak bayar tak cukup nisab? Nah, itu adalah ajaran sesat. Ajaran tak betul. Dia sebenarnya, dia kena gabung semua gaji dia dalam masa setahun. Jadi contohnya, okay, contohnya gaji dia berapa? Dua ribu kan? Dua ribu. Darab dengan dua belas. Dia kena gabung dalam masa setahun. Dapat dua puluh empat ribu. 24000 kan lebih daripada 17000. Hmm, okay. Jadi dia kena bayar gaji. Hmm. Ah, sorry, dia kena bayar zakat. Ya, zakat. Sebab gaji je pun dah 2000 kan. Sepatutnya 1300 ke atas tu dah kena bayar kan. Ha, jadi mudah hmm. mudah nak kira tu 1300 lah. Hmm. Tapi original originally hukum dia macam ni. Gaji melebihi Nisab untuk gaji ialah 85 gram emas. Okay. So, 85 gram emas. Katalah 1 gram 200 ringgit. So, darab 12 jadilah 17. Huh? Sorry. 1 gram 200 ringgit. Darab uh, 85. So, 17 ribu. Sebab tu berjabat zakat, dia akan bahagi dengan dua belas. Hmm. Dia bahagi dengan dua belas, nak bagi orang tak confuse. Hmm. Dia sebenarnya, idealnya ialah gaji mesti uh, 85 gram emas atau lebih. 17,000 atau lebih. Okay. Tapi sebulan, katalah dia dapat 2000. So dia pandai pula pergi cakap gaji saya 2000 tak sampai pun. <laughs> tak kena. Itu tak betul sebab uh, hukum dia ialah uh, gaji yang diterima mesti ditambah sepanjang tahun. Must be combined throughout the year. Must be combined throughout the year. Maksudnya kena dicampur lah. Campur. Ha, kena darat dengan dua belah lah maksudnya. Untuk menentukan nisab. Okay. So, gaji dia dua ribu. Dia kena darat dua belah lah. Masa mudah dia. Yeah. Untuk tentukan nisab 85 gram emas. Hmm. Benda simple macam tu pun ramai orang tak faham. Ustaz-ustaz pun tak faham. <laughs> Saya duduk bincang dengan Ustaz, mereka duduk kata 
benda-benda macam tu lah daripada kata eh, gaji saya baru je lima ribu nisab lapan berlima gram mas tujuh belah ribu tak cukup lah ustaz pun kata macam tu maksud tak faham tak faham dia kena combine Main. Panjang tahun. Pembayar ni masuk bahasa muda darat 12 lah. Hmm. Maksud kena campur pendapatan selama setahun untuk kira nisab. Okay. Jenis-jenis zakat ada dua jenis zakat iaitu zakatul fitri, zakatul mal. Ya. So types of zakat there are two categories zakatul fitri and zakatul mal zakatul fitri is zakat paid in the month of ramadan the payment of zakat al fitri is an obligation to all muslims regardless of their age status or wealth during the month of ramadan The amount of zakat to fitri is equal to the price of one bushel or sa'a or equivalent to 2.3 kilogram of staple food in the country in which the person lives. Okay. Di Malaysia ni, lembaga zakat menetapkan Tiga kategori ya. Tujuh ringgit. Lepas tu berapa ringgit kita. Ada tiga kategori. Bergantung kepada jenis beras yang dimakan. Itu zakat fitrah. Zakat tu fitri. Zakat tu fitri is equal to the price of one bushel or one sa'ah. Or equivalent to 2.3 kilogram of staple food. Macam kita 2.3 kilo beras. 2.3 kilo beras. Kilo berapa? Sedarat 2.3. Jadi lebih kurang RM7. Lebih kurang RM7. Bergantung pada jenis beras yang kita makan. Hmm. Kalau beras tu sekilo, sekilo dua ringgit enam kupang. Darab dua puluh tiga. So, sekilo ada yang dua ringgit enam kupang, darab dua puluh tiga. So, enam ringgit. Ringgit. Tapi, kedah ni tetapkan tujuh ringgit. Tujuh ringgit.
Okay, zakat to man, zakat on wealth. Zakat to man. Zakat to man is categorized into several categories, namely zakat on gold, silver, income, savings, livestock, agricultural produce, business, employees, provident fund, and share. Ada, ben, ada banyak kategori zakat hasil. Okay, let's look at a zakat on gold. Gold is zakatable, whether in the in the form of jewelry or otherwise. Masa sama ada dalam bentuk apa ni hiasan ataupun otherwise dalam bentuk Bukan hiasan, dalam bentuk ketui ke, dalam bentuk apa pun, kita tetap kena zakat. Okay. If, uh, if its weight is greater than the minimum nisab. It is a religious obligation for Muslims to pay zakat on gold. When the gold in possession exceeds 20 dinar or misqal, or equivalent to 85 grams for a period of how longer than one lunar year. However, there are two categories, there are two categories of gold, which is categorized as follows. Number one, gold in the form of gold bars, kept in banks, and gold jewelry, which is not intended to use as jewelry, which reaches Hal and Nisa. The amount of zakat payment is 2.5% of the amount of gold that exceeds the Nisa. Second, gold used as Women jewelry. Gold used women as jewelry. women jewelry is zakatable if the weight of gold exceeds the howl and oruf. Zakat to be paid is 2.5% on the excess of oruf. Okay. Hmm. Kalau mas tu simpanan. Dia tak pakai ataupun masuk dalam bentuk apa ni dalam bentuk ketul golden bar dalam bentuk bar kepingan emas ataupun perhiasan yang tak dipakai dia okay. dia mestilah cukup hal cukup nisab okay Cukup hal dan cukup nisab. Nisabnya ialah apa? Nisabnya 85 gram emas. So, lebih. Lebih itu kena bayar. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yang kedua, emas digunakan sebagai perhiasan. Katalah orang perempuan pakai emas. Okay. Kemudian, um, emas itu melebihi hal dan uruf. Uh, kalau dia pakai, okay, kalau dia pakai, dia kena cukup hal dan kena cukup uruf. Apakah dia uruf? Uruf ialah kebiasaan orang perempuan memakai emas di sesuatu tempat. Dia tak sama. So, siapa yang tentukan uruf? Lembaga zakat masing-masing. Yang ni kena check lah. Uruf 
Kedah. Di, di Kedah berapa? Hmm. Berapa ketimbangan uruf di Kedah? Kena cek dia berubah dari semasa ke semasa. Hmm. Setakat tahun lepas, Kedah tetapkan uruf sama dengan Nisab. 85 gram. Hmm. Tengah tempat macam di Melaka, dia tetapkan uruf yang lebih tinggi. Sebab uruf ni maksudnya berapakah timbangan emas yang biasanya orang perempuan pakai di tempat tersebut. Ini tak sama lah. Kalau di India mungkin lain. Mungkin dia pakai banyak emas kan. Mm. Uh, di Kedah ni berapa, berapakah uruf? Uruf tu kebiasaan orang perempuan memakai emas. Mm. Uruf kena cek dengan lembaga zakat masing-masing lah. Ini penting. Ini pun ramai orang tak faham. Ramai orang kata, oh kalau pakai emas, tak payah banyak zakat. Dia ada banyak emas, kan? Sampai boleh pakai sampai ke siku. So, dia pakai lah. Sebab dia tak mahu banyak zakat. Betul ke tu? Tak betul? Betul. Tak betul. Dia mesti banyak zakat jika melebih hal dan melebih uruf. Nilai uruf uh, boleh cek di lembaga zakat masing-masing. Okay. Kalau dia tak pakai, dia confirm kena bayar. Kalau lebih daripada 85 gram emas dan cukup hal, dia confirm kena bayar. Hmm. Kalau yang 85 gram tu untuk kedah saja kan? Sendiri lain pun lain-lain kan? Sama. Oh semua sama. Oh semua sama. Uh, kalau ni sok sama. 85 hmm. gram. Seluruh dunia. Oh, okay. Dia kena kira lah. Hmm. Uh, kalau dia timbang-timbang tengok lebih daripada 85 gram. Dia kena banyak zakat. Berapa banyak banyak zakat? 2.5% of the amount of gold that exceeds the nisab. 2.5% daripada uh, jumlah jumlah emas hmm. yang melebihi nisab. Maksudnya begini. Okey, katalah ni katalah nisab 17000. Okey. Dia uh, 85 gram uh, kira ke 17000. Kemudian katalah dia ada berapa gram eh? Kemudian kira-kira semua nilai emas dia 40000. Hmm. So dia kena bayar berapa? 25 peratus hmm. darab 40000. So dapatlah seribu Jumlah zakat dia kena banyak seribu Sebab banyak orang buat ke mana Kalau dia, kalau nilai dia sampai 40 ribu lah contoh hmm. Okay Okay, saya kita kita We stop here Okay Uh, we will continue next week. Nanti kalau ramai orang join kelas, uh, mungkin banyak lagi soalan lah. Hmm. Uh, ini kelas pertama dulu lah. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, we will continue with uh, zakat on silver. Hmm. InsyaAllah. Okay, ada apa-apa soalan sebelum kita sebelum kita berhenti? Any question? Hmm. Tak ada. Hmm, okay. 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 Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.